Greetings. Here to discuss the Schmermann method for determination of settlement in granular soils. And as this process occurs rather rapidly, this is sometimes included within the family of methods for immediate settlement. It does apply to sands, notably. Uh, could be gravels and so on, but generally is considered a method for sands. Excuse me. Schmermann's method uh, for settlement of footings on granular soils is more precise than other methods because it is first off based on the cone penetration test. This has quite a bit more precision as well as resolution than the standard penetration test. It also allows the engineer to divide the soil into layers and assign a different modulus uh, to each layer, and that's rather helpful. It considers the relative importance of each layer through use of a strain influence factor. And the, let's consider a footing placed at the ground surface just to keep things manageable here before we get into width depth and so on and look at the conceptual response of that from distribution of stress shown in green and distribution of strain shown in a red dashed line. And as you see these are not proportional and that is indicative of soils and having uh, nonlinear behavior in this regard. And the distribution of stress, this would be common for say, M and N chart, Boos and S type method and so on. You can sort through values with that, but the strain uh, does take on this entirely different shape. And we'll be looking at that uh, during this session. The strain in the Z direction uh, is calculated rather fundamentally uh, with the equation presented here. And this is representing stress levels. Uh, I'm presenting here a stress on the foundation base, including the column load, the backfill, and the weight of the footing called Q sub B. Q sub naught, which we've used in the Terzaghi and Vasic uh, bearing capacity equations, is the effective stress at ZF equals zero at a depth of zero that indicates depth below the footing of zero. Um, and this terminology here is a bit of a mathematical symbol, uh, you know, specialized symbol. Salgado is using this a lot in his textbook and notation for this, and it's rather effective to start having multiple subscripts. Uh, and this is indicating depth below the foundation. So in this methodology, we're going to be dealing with uh, two different kinds of depths, one below the ground surface and one below the footing. And this is indicative of the footing, Z sub F. Uh, this is the effective stress at the location of the base of the footing before any construction activity occurred. Quite similar or the same thing as what we did with Q naught for uh, foundation. And the difference between those two, we can call QB net, by the way, the, the difference between the stress after the load, and that's after excavation, placement of concrete, backfilling the region with soil on top of the foundation, considering weight of foundation, all that gets built in after the fact. And this Q naught or sigma V prime at ZF of zero is what it was ahead of time. So it's the difference between that, and sometimes this is called net. The modulus and Poisson's ratio are elastic content, constants, and the A and F are dimensionless factors, which are a function of geometry. The approximation of the actual strain distribution, we can draw a triangular type shape uh, or at least by linear representation of that. You saw the red curve a few slides back. This is a simplified version of that. And what we're gonna do is define a strain influence factor, IZ, that has a function taking on this shape. So that is at the heart of the Schmerman method. Let's let IZ equal one plus Poisson's ratio times the 
quantity one minus two times Poisson's ratio a plus f. And we can see that the strain in the z direction looks something like this. And we can define a peak iz value. And that would be iz at the peak. So that'd be at the point of that uh, graph on the last slide. And this it has a numerical value, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.1 times the uh, quotient QB net uh, sigma V prime at depth below foundation equals ZFP. ZF at the peak is what this is identifying. The generic shape of the curve would look something like this. And I have in this situation, uh, let's look at this Z over B to begin with. This is occurring at one half B, a depth of one half B. In other words, Z is equal to one half B and Z equals B for a strip. So it's a different shape, a deeper shape for a strip. And that is indicative that a strip foundation going infinitely into the page will have a deeper influence in the soil. And that is quite intuitive. Uh, so this bracket here on this graphic identifies what a strip foundation would look like. The number standing alone would be for a square or circular foundation. And this is a plot of IZ versus depth. So we have a constant value up at the top, and that is 0.1 for square circle or 0.2 for strips. So it's just a, that is what the value is right under the foundation always. It's just a constant. It comes out to this peak value, which we calculated on the past slide at this depth. And it comes down to a value of zero at either 2B for square or circle or 4B alternatively for a strip. And again, that strip having a deeper influence in this regard. So this is the generic shape. What I'd like to do at this stage is superimpose the two, one for square, one for strip, to show the difference between them. And as it turns out, a square will have a little bit higher influence factor up near the surface, and the strip would be a little bit lower, but containing a lot more volume or area enclosed within that. And I have some highlight, you know, target values, B over two being location of the peak here, B, the peak of the red, the strip, 2B being the location where the square foundation returns to zero, and 4B being the value where it returns to zero for a strip. And Salgado presents some um, equations. So uh, an interpolation scheme is available for some intermediate triangles, if you want to call these uh, triangles, uh, for rectangular shape foundations. I'm not presenting those herein. They're quite straightforward and involve L over B and would allow for a little different shapes and uh, I sub Z peak values as well as where the endpoints are and so on in regard to this. CPT data it can be simplified to arrive at layers. And it would look something like this. And I'm just showing you know, an example where there's some rather abrupt breaks in the soil types. And you can see very clearly that there would in fact be three divisions in this graphic, layer one, layer two, layer three. And this is for the cone tip resistance Q sub C with depth. So it would look something like that. And the idea here with this method is that we're gonna superimpose this layering with that past triangular graphic of strain influence factor to make calculations for settlement. And when we put this whole thing together, this is a graphic from Salgado textbook, it would look something like this. And this is a little more practical setup where the foundation is in fact embedded below the ground. The I sub epsilon or I sub Z would look like this. And it's starting, mind you, at the base of the foundation. And the cone penetration test, the layering, would also begin below the foundation, at least the important layering that you're going to be counting for this. And there is a layer interface 
identified here right at the peak. And that is for the convenience of selecting numbers and doing some interpolation on these linear sections of this function. It is prudent to have a layer interface here, even though if it's only for your uh, you know, strategy and mathematical use, there's not a change in cone penetration resistance in this region. It's virtually one soil layer for stiffness, but there is a layer interface presented here as that is an important point for calculations. The modulus for a given layer is approximated as 2.5 QC if it is young, normally consolidated silica sand, 3.5 QC for aged, normally consolidated silica sand, 6.0 Q for QC for overconsolidated silica sand. And this is uh, available through the literature. So these are uh, what has been presented and you can use these as guidelines for extending to other SAM types. There are some correction factors that will be applied. A C1 will have a correction, an application of correction for foundation embedment and has a value one minus 0 0.5 times the quantity sigma v prime vertical effective stress at depth of foundation depth below the foundation i should say equals zero and qb minus sigma v prime at that same location right at the foundation base uh, and a correction for creep c2 is one plus 0 0.2 times the log of little t which is time and 0.1 TR, where TR is a reference time, and that's one year. And you can have this in any set of units as long as it is, in fact, consistent here. So if you have a problem set up in months, uh, this would be 12 months. If you have it set up in days for whatever reason, it would be 365 days or decades and so on. But it would be a value of one year to match this. The settlement calculation looks something like this. W, Salgado terminology for settlement, is equal to C1 times C2, the correction factors, times this net change, net stress uh, change from the end point after construction to the starting before any construction was there, times a summation of this I sub Z for a given layer times delta Z I over EI. And the C1, C2 are corrections as I mentioned, delta Z is a layer of thickness, and EI is a modulus. We'll go through an example here a bit to see how this all unfolds. And that is in fact right here the next on the program. We'll look at a square footing. So B equals L equals three meters. The depth of embedment, 1.5 meter. We have a young, normally consolidated silica sand, simply presented so you can go back to the correlations in this regard. A gamma of the soil, 17.8 kilonewton per cubic meter. Q sub B is 160 kilonewton per meter squared. And note that the QB includes all of this. It includes the column load spread out over that foundation. It includes the weight of the foundation itself, and it includes this backfill shaded in red here in this zone. So it's all three components built into that 160 kPa. The time period, I'll look at a rather short time period here, five years. Most certainly you could look at longer periods for most structures. And we'll determine the settlement of the footing using the given CBT data. And next up will be a simplified interpretation of CBT. So similar to what was presented on previous slides where you have a squiggly CPT response and draw a vertical line through it and make uh, judgment in terms of where there are breakpoints in that response. That has already been done in this problem 
uh, and established the layering for 3,200 kPa or kilonewton per meter squared, 4,000 for the next layer, and 6,400 for the next layer. And this has been aligned with the influence factor associated with the square foundation. So this over here is depth below ground surface. 1.5 was depth of embedment. 2.5 is the layer interface. A little bit further down, 0.5b below the foundation is in fact going to bring us to three meter depth for the peak. 5.5 five is the next layer interface. So this is a virtual layer interface only in place for calculation purposes to be able to interpolate on both sides of this peak point. We'll see that in just a bit. And coming down to 2B depth below the foundation. So the red depths here are depths below the footing. The black depths on the left our depths below the ground surface. So there is some bookkeeping involved in this method to keep those separate. The layer interface, again, is placed at the depth of the peak, a virtual. So IZ peak is 0.5 plus 0.1 times this stress change over stress at the peak. And let's break this out into its components. QB minus sigma V prime. Uh, that should be a minus sign. I'm sorry about that typo. It is 160 QB minus 17.8 times 1.5 meters. I'm sorry for that. This line has two typos, and I apologize for that. This should say 17.8 times 1.5 meters, representing that stress at the depth of the foundation. And the total area is 133.3. So you can run that calculation to make sure you have that sorted out. And I apologize for the inconsistency in the print there. Sigma V prime at the depth of the peak is going to be 17.8 times three meters this time. So we can go back to that graphic and find that we're coming down to this point here. So it's three meters under the ground surface to get down there. And it's 17.8, all of this soil in this region is 17.8 kilonewton per cubic meter. And that three is representing the depth of embedment plus half of B. So I'll go back again. Depth of embedment, one and a half, plus half of B to get down to the peak. That peak is defined as being for a square foundation, 0.5B below the base of the foundation. 53.4 is what results from that. IZ at the peak, therefore, with those intermediate calculations, comes out to 0 0.66. And what we're gonna do is establish a table looking something like this. CPT method, this is originally developed in 1970, by the way, and refined a bit in 1978. And the settlement equation we've already seen, so we're just filling this in, and we will use this table to establish this last column and get a summation at the bottom of it, which is this last term of the equation. So let's construct a table. You have a layer I, a counter for that layer, a delta Z at I, a thickness of that given individual layer, a Q sub C, a modulus, a Z, a depth of the center line for that given layer, an IZ, at that location of the center line, and then a mathematical operation of some previous columns here. So this is depth below footing that I'm showing here for layer one, two, three, four. And 
the layer thickness therefore can be calculated directly from those differences between the top and the bottom of each layer and it would look something like this one one half two and a half two and something you can do here is sum this column and make sure that you're back to the entire height of that influence diagram that triangle of 2b in this case or six meters q sub c was given in the problem you saw and e sub i the modulus we can use young normally consolidated clay will be two and a half times that column so we end up with 3,200, 4,000 for the two intermediate layers, 6,400. Multiply each of those by two and a half to arrive at these numbers. That will also be in KPA, the units have not changed. And Z of the center line, what we have here is the depth below the footing to the mid height of each of these layers. So zero to one meter, it would be at a half meter is the mid height, one to one and a half, 1.25, one five to four, 2.75, four to six, we have five as the center line. I sub Z is interpolated from the curve to each Z of the center line. And it is a strict linear interpolation. And I certainly hope you can sort through that mathematics. You're moving from base of foundation, in this case, a value of 0 0.1, out to the peak, 0 0.66, in traversing through that range of depth. And then you are traversing from 0.66 value down to 0 in heading on that lower, longer slope heading back to zero at 2B below the foundation. And Salgado actually provides some equations, but I find this quite straightforward that I think you can uh, interpolate on a line is really what you're doing, but you wanna be careful that you're building in that constant at the onset, meaning right at the foundation base, and you're getting the value correct for the peak as well as these depth of calculation which represented by the z of the center line or the mid height of the layer and mathematical operation will allow us to complete this table and we end up with values looking like this 3.6 times 10 to the minus 5 2.8 times 10 to the minus 5 1.2 and so on uh, down here so the summation from zero to B is simply the summation of these values. And we end up with 2.01 times 10 to the minus four uh, as a numerical value at this stage. Note that modulus and layer thickness need to have consistent units. You need to have those aligned such as kilonewtons and meters or kpa and meters this kind of thing uh, to allow this these equations to work and the interpolation this is just a note on that uh, that i had already discussed in the past slide the corrections first correction for embedment is related to stress conditions and comes out to a value of 0 0.9 I'll let you look through the notation here and stress levels and so on and follow the numbers through uh, to better understand that. C2 is related to creep. That is the long-term performance of this system. And we have one plus 0 0.2 times the log of whatever time of interest we have. Recall that was five years in this problem over 0.1 times one year in whatever units. This happens to be in years, so it will look like this, five year over 0.1, that being within the log sign, one plus 0.2 times that gives us a correction for creep of 1.34.
the settlement calculation in the end is settlement W, the long equation associated with that, fill in with values that we have, and we come up with 32.3 times 10 to the minus three meters or 32.3 millimeters, a little more than an inch. And that would be quite typical in sands that you generally have rather modest amounts of settlement as compared to some other mechanisms such as consolidation, which can lead to quite a bit more than that. Uh, this is not to say sands will not settle. There are loose sands if loaded heavily can go through significant uh, displacements as well. Uh, but in general, you would expect to have sand settlements be quite a bit less than uh, other problematic soils. So that is it for the Schmertman technique and hope that helps you understand this.